Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another video. We are back once again. I'm in my 370Z right now, so that's where I'm going to be shooting this video and I think a couple more videos because it is so hot outside, guys. Like, I'm not wanting to go out there. Like, I'm parked in a park right now, but it is just way too hot to uh, to go outside and, and walk around. Um, I actually work today, so I also don't want to be sweaty before I go into work because at my job, um, if you guys don't know this, if you haven't seen the previous videos on this channel, I work at Dave & Buster's and the type of position I have, um, at times it can get very, very busy and um, basically you're sweating the entire time. So that is what happened last night at the time of this recording. Um, it was a very, very busy day. I think probably one of the busiest days of the summer. It's like the weekend before school starting when I'm shooting this. So. It makes sense, you know, all these kids are coming out and and going there to play the arcades and everything. Um, and also I heard there was like a basketball game or something happening across the street, so that's probably why as well. But either way, um, I'm shooting this video in my car for that reason, it is too hot to be out there dealing with that. Um, also, it's a good idea for me to sit here in my car for a little while because I'm charging up my dash cam. Uh, if you guys don't know, I have a dash cam up here I have this camera right here which shoots the interior and it shoots back and it's infrared so it can see at night which is good uh, if anyone breaks in my car stuff like that um, it'll cover that um, this one up here is the 4k dash cam so it has a 4k front and a 1080p rear facing which I kind of don't like that it's only 1080p for the interior but with a camera that small, it's essentially just impossible to have a dual channel dash cam with the interior 4K. I have not seen one single brand that offers that, so that's just what I have. Um, but um, I wanted to talk a little bit in this video about my dash cam setup for this car. Um, and some of the things that have really been frustrating me with this setup. So I have these dash cams. Well, it's essentially one dash cam. It's just wired into each other. So this one uh, is the interior rear facing one. That one shoots the front, um, but they're all wired up. You see the cables running all through here. So it actually goes back, um, back there and then goes underneath the seat. And underneath the seat, there's actually um, a hotspot that is connected to two battery packs. And those battery packs are really big battery packs. I think it's like, 12,600 milliamps, but it's not like the 12,600 you would buy in like a small power bank for like your phone. Um, it's actually, instead of lithium uh, ion, I think it's lithium iron phosphate. So it's the it's the difference um, from, what, from what is normal, I guess you could say. Um, it's different from that. Um, it's a different compound that actually allows the, uh, the battery pack to do well in extreme temperatures. So like if it gets really cold in my car, if it drops really low um, temperature in here in the freezing winter, it'll still be able to function and operate the cameras. Um, also in extreme heat, but I will say to a degree because I've still had overheating issues with this camera. Um, and it gets very annoying because I paid a lot of money for the dash cam setup. You know, the cameras alone, this dual channel setup I think was like six or eight hundred um, and then the the battery packs individually are like 300 so I have two of those and then I have a hot spot which isn't really I mean I guess you could include that but um, that one wasn't too expensive I think like a hundred fifty or something like that maybe a hundred um, but the the hot spot is separate from this brand it's actually offered through my the phone carrier that I use Verizon um, so I'm paying for that. So essentially I have two lines uh, I'm paying for every month on my phone bill, which isn't really that expensive. Um, I think it's like 128 a month right now. So not too bad for two lines um, with unlimited data, all that kind of stuff. Um, at least for my phone, it's unlimited data. It's like 50 gig for that hotspot, which is plenty. Um, I found that uh, five gig for the hotspot is not enough for this dash cam. Uh, this dash cam, like I said, it shoots in 4K and 1080p, so the 4K clips are going to be bigger than the 1080p clips. And when I download those 
as often as I do because I do check the dash cam pretty often um, and I do download quite a bit of footage 50 gig was a way better option um, for me um, but this video is not really about the storage option so we might save that for another video if you guys want to know more about that just let me know in the comments down below but the main frustration with this camera is just the fact that it's it's overheating and I paid so much and it's like the top tier it's like the best the best dash cam you can get um, so it really frustrates me because I've had I think this is like my fourth or fifth dash cam and um, I wanted to do something really really good for this car I wanted like the best of the best to protect this vehicle um, because to me this vehicle is like an investment and I don't want anything to happen to it so I wanted to get the best of the best with cloud connectivity and live view and all that kind of stuff all the fancy features essentially so that's why I bought this dash cam and the whole setup um, but the overheating is getting very annoying because in this car you know it, it's up in the windshield so if it if I'm facing the Sun um, it will overheat uh, pretty quickly I'd say about 15 to 20 minutes with the temperatures that we're experiencing right now where it's around 100 degrees or a little bit above that um, inside the car as you guys probably are aware it gets much hotter than the outside temperature um, so what I've found to work for me is I started parking in a different parking spot at my workplace um, it's one of the places that I really do want to make sure that I have dash cam footage rolling at all times um, and I found that if I'm facing away from the Sun if the windshield is facing the opposite direction which because I work a closing shift that actually works in my favor because the spot that I park at is facing away from the Sun um, then the dash cam really doesn't overheat at least not that much or for that long um, so what will happen is if it overheats if it cools down inside the car and it reaches that temperature that, that it feels comfortable it can boot back up into then it will automatically do that so um, I've uh, I've been working at my workplace before and um, it's like died disconnected I get a notification that it disconnected which essentially means that the camera shut off because it overheated either the dash cam overheated or the battery packs below the seat um, so basically um, I'm just kind of dealing with it right now um, it, it is the best of the best I'm just really waiting for temperatures to drop outside because um, I don't want to have to keep dealing with this but what I found is if I go out and I drive the car for instance like I'm doing right now just for a little bit to get some extra charge on there um, as well because it does use quite a bit of power um, when I compare it to the battery pack and the usage of the camera it drains it somewhat fast so I, I want to make sure that I'm out here charging it but the point with uh, leaving the car running a little bit before I go into work kind of just sitting there for maybe 15 minutes or so is to make the car cooler so I'll run my AC and that will allow me to have the internal temperature of my car lower than the outside temperature um, by quite a bit so that way even if I'm opening and closing my doors it will take a while for the temperature to rise up again so that's kind of what I've been doing with regards to that um, something that I wanted to talk about that I just touched on briefly is the battery usage um, because this camera when it detects motion it's going to record an event and when it records an event um, it's going to use both cameras and that draws power um, more power than a single channel which wouldn't have the interior camera it'd just be just the front facing one so because of the setup that I have specifically it uses quite a bit of power um, and I found that when it comes to my dash cam running 24 7 because there's a highway that's behind me when I'm at work and it's catching like all the cars going by so it's constantly recording the whole time so if it's constantly recording the whole time and I have like 24% on the battery packs um, then I think I can get like four to six hours out of it but I work an eight-hour shift so it usually dies before I'm done working so what I've been doing lately is I've been trying to go out and at least drive the car for like 30 to 40 minutes um, including the drive time to work um, to kind of charge the dash cam up a little bit more um, just so that it's not gonna die before my shifts over and I've been kind of experimenting with it lately um, because I, I really want to get this down and figure out exactly how long I need to charge it before I go into work um, 
Now, what's interesting is when the dash cam overheats, it actually holds the charge on the batteries because if the dash cam overheats, it shuts off so there's no power being drawn. Um, so basically what happened is I just left my house to come here to film this video and basically the dash cam still had 24% when I started the car up and everything cooled down inside and the dash cam powered on. Um, I still had 24%, so right now I'm, I'm sure I'm like 32% by now because um, I, I drove a little bit to get to where I'm at now. Um, but essentially, the dash cam is a great dash cam. It's the best of the best, but it does have some flaws, some quirks, I guess you could say. Um, but I'm glad I have it, but it just kind of sucks. It's, it's frustrating when the temperatures get like this. Um, now, when it comes to extreme cold, I don't recall how it performed when last winter hit. I, I don't remember. Um, but I think it was pretty much on the entire time. I don't think I've, I've ever gotten the car cold enough for the dash cam to just shut off. So I'm not too concerned about cold temperatures, but the hot temperatures, definitely, I have to like park away from the sun. Um, it does help that I have window tent, but of course window tent is not on my front windshield, so it doesn't really help if I'm facing the sun. So as long as I'm not facing the sun, essentially I'm pretty okay. I would say that it functions about 80 to 90% of the time um, when the temperature is is fine inside my car um, or maybe even higher than 90% um, because I found that as long as I have enough charge and the day is not too hot outside if it's not like over 100 um, then I should be good for my whole shift but uh, it's been really frustrating overall but I've been troubleshooting it and testing it and just kind of seeing um, what is going on with it and how to best get out of it what I want out of it but if you do want to buy this dash cam this particular dash cam I have um, it's from Blackview this one I think it's a 900 series I don't remember if it's like a if there's any others like if it's 900 920 950 um, but I think it's a 900 something series um, but it's got the 4k ultra HD front facing camera and the 1080p IR infrared um, cabin interior camera I think is what they call it or like interior camera um, but it's a great camera so if you want to purchase one um, don't don't let this video um, you know make you afraid of buying it it's a great dash cam it's pretty much the best you can get um, definitely worth the money in my opinion um, but like I said there's just some things that kind of fall short on when it comes to extreme temperatures but if you don't live in an area like I do, which is the Midwest essentially, where it gets like really, really hot, you should be good. You shouldn't have any problems running this dash cam. Um, besides battery charge, of course, battery power. But you can hardwire it too if you want to do that, but that's just not what I wanted to do. Um, but with all that being said, hopefully you got something out of this video. Hopefully you found it educational in, in some form. Um, I, I really wanted to go out and just kind of I guess in a way vent my frustration with this camera um, but like I said it's still a great camera highly recommend it um, I'm gonna film a couple more videos while I'm out here and yeah that's pretty much all I've got for today's video so thanks for watching I'll see you in the next one